So here's an interesting challenge. How do you take this shot, remove the hand, and then replace that hand with a robotic hand? Today, I wanted to share the process and walk through my blend files with you so that you can have an idea of how I pulled this off. Pretty much what we wanna do for the first step is just get rid of this hand in the shot. And it gets a little tricky because it goes in front of the floppy drive here and it goes behind the bag in the clip here. So we wanna keep the bag and we also wanna keep the floppy drive and we don't want there to be any evidence of a hand. Okay, so for the clean plate, the first thing I did was actually track the footage. This is a pretty simple track. It's just a tripod track because the camera isn't moving anywhere. So I just got all these little points here and I did a tripod solve. And when you do that and you go into the layout and put a camera solver constraint on your camera here. And if we look in the camera view, you can see the grid is matching up to the corner of the table pretty much here and everything's moving around as it should which makes it pretty straightforward to take a freeze frame from somewhere like here then you can just take some basic geometry and just project that and now we have this background tracked in for the whole clip all we need is a couple of masks to get pretty far along our way so if i just look i've got a little masks object that i tracked this bag and so if we go into the mask tab you can see i've masked out the bag and we should just be able to keep this, and then behind it, we can replace it with that tracked in background that we put together. Let's take a look at a couple other masks. We want a hand bottom and a hand top mask. If we look at the hand bottom, it is all of these fingers that go behind everything, and basically all of this stuff, we can just replace that with the background and get rid of it. Then we've also got a hand top, which is a little bit different because these fingers go on top of the floppy drive we want to be able to mask these out and then eventually replace them with the floppy drive. And then if you combine that with the mask of the bag, we get pretty far along here. So we've got the background pretty well sorted out. Now we have to figure out how to display what's behind this thumb. And our answer to that is, hey, we've got a pretty good frame here of everything that's behind the thumb. Problem is it's moving all over the place once the thumb does show up. So what I did was I have another object here that I added in called disk. And this is pretty cool because it's actually a plane track. If we do the plane track drop down, this is all the settings for that. Basically, you need to track four different points. And it took me quite a while to track these four points, but it's very much worth it because when you do, you can go to the solve tab. There's a plane track up here. And with four points selected, you can hit create plane track. And I just stretched these points out to the corners of the floppy drive. And then you can go new image from plane marker. And then with that image loaded into the plane track, if we just scroll through here, you can see we've got whatever was behind the thumb all set up here. And that just tracks right through the footage. And it looks pretty wonky, but it actually does a really good job for what we need. Now, the other cool thing about a plane track is if we go into the masking mode, we can actually create a mask so I've got this disc mask, and I just put the mask all the way around the disc here. And then with the mask selected, you can then select the plane track and go Control-P, and then the mask will follow the plane track. And I've had to animate this mask in a few places just so it sticks a little bit better, but you end up with a really nice starting point for a good mask of the disc. So if I hop over to the compositing tab for the clean plate, you can see it's a pretty crazy composite to get this result, but let's just break some stuff down. So here up in the corner, we've got our hand top and hand bottom masks. So if I just take a look at these, this is the top and this is the bottom. Let's say all this white part we just replace with our tracked in background. And then the hand top is the thumb and the other finger that go in front of the floppy disk. So I'm basically just adding these two masks together like this. But in between, I've got sandwiched in this subtract node. This is the mask that I was telling you about that's parented to the plane track. And so we go hand bottom. This is replaced with the background. Then we subtract this and we keep everything on the disk in the foreground. And then we add in the thumb and the finger with this node. And you can see this covers up a lot of stuff, but we still have this original information about the disk here. So it's like the disk information is sandwiched in between the two groups. And then over here, I've got our mask of the bag here, which I just put through a dial 8 road, and I've blurred that a little bit. 
just to match up with the depth of field. And you can see this is all the fingers. And then we just subtract that. And it just takes a little bit of a chunk out where the bag is going to be. And now, if we take a look at our original footage, this is what it looks like with all the fingers. And this is our complicated little mask of everything. And this is our tracked in background. If we mix these all together with the mix node, just using the mask into the factor, the footage into the top, and our tracked in background of the bottom, we get this little thing. Now, we're still missing quite a bit of the disk here. So if I go down here a little bit and I show you what's going on down here, this is our plane track image. It's basically just the disk flattened out. And I've put this through a plane track deform. And so for this, I've got the object track of the disk. And then it needs to know what plane track we did. So there's that. And I've checked motion blur. So this is pretty cool. It takes this image and it deforms it to be in the place where we had tracked it from. So this will just move throughout the footage like the real floppy disk did. And it's got all of this information for behind the thumb. And I've got this set to a scale, so that'll just scale to the proper size for our scene. And I've done a little bit of color balancing on it. This just bumps it a little bit closer to the skin colors that the thumb is reflecting in the original footage. And even though technically it shouldn't be that color with no thumb there, it just helps it blend together a little bit better when it's got those colors. And so this is the result we got before. And we take this same mask that we created before, just give it a little bit more juice so that we're covering a little bit more area with a dilate erode. And then we mix back in our tracked in disc here and we've got all this added back in here. So we have a clean plate. I've rendered that out. And now let's talk a little bit about the CG hand element. Now this thing is kind of a mess. It's not really made to look good from any angle except for the camera view. And it's probably a little bit too detailed. I've actually kind of put in like way too much like mechanisms and stuff inside the fingers. So those are too complicated. But let me just show you the most important part of the rig, which is the fingertips here. I've got these set to be inverse kinematics so that you can choose the thumb position basically and the rest of the finger will stick to that position. A little detail that I found was pretty good on the IK constraint here was to check rotation so that we can actually affect the rotation of the whole finger by the rotation of the little control point at the end. And that just helps it become a little bit more poseable. So basically, I went through the footage and I animated every single one of these fingers. I've got the main bone kind of approximating the position of the main hand here. And then just looking at the footage, I put these little other fingers in. And it's pretty awkward animation, but it's so quick that you barely notice it. I think the most important part of this to nail down was the thumb placement. So that's when the IK came in handy. It's supposed to look like it's connecting with the floppy disk and just staying in the same point. So it was actually pretty helpful for me in the background images to switch to the clean plate so that I could see, oh yeah, I always want this bone to be in this little corner of the floppy disk. And that way I was a little bit more consistent, but if you look closely, you can kind of still see it sliding around. You really want it to look like the CG hand is gripping the object. But yeah, that's the animation and the rig of the hand. For the lighting, I just kind of fudged it. I did have an HDRI that was kind of from that setup, but it wasn't really super accurate. But thankfully, I did have this floppy drive here that was a pretty good reference for the same color that I wanted the fingers to be. So I could just look at the lighting on the floppy disk and just kind of match that up to the robotic hand. So I have this light over here and basically the HDRI are all that's lighting the scene. And then a couple other things that I used to help blend it in was I actually checked motion blur because it's a pretty fast object. We want the motion blur in there. And then in the camera settings, I also set up a bit of depth of field this is pretty squirrely. It's not to scale or anything. So I just kind of looked and I saw, okay, right here on the floppy drive is in focus. This stuff is out of focus. The focus is just kind of on the thumb here. And then all these other fingers are pretty much out of focus in the shot. So yeah, that's, that's pretty much the CG hand element of this. And now we go into the final composite. So last phase, basically the intricacies of this composite are we want some of the fingers to be behind the floppy disk. We want some to be in front of the floppy disk. And then we want everything to be behind the bag. And then also we want some contact shadows here from where the thumb is touching the floppy disk. So let's just break this down real quick and take a look at the masks. We've got the bag mask. That's going through a dilate road to be a little bit smaller. 
and then we've got a little blur. And once again, that's just because it's in the front of the scene and it's a little bit blurrier. And then down here, let's take a look at this. We've got the floppy disk mask here, and I feel like this should have motion blur checked. I don't know why I didn't check that. And that's going through a dilate erode, then that's going through a blur, and I'm sending this to a couple of different areas, but let's just take a look at the subtract because this is really cool. I'm using a crypto mat. I probably won't get into how to use that in this tutorial, but basically you can select different objects from your scene and get a nice mask for that. So we've got the fingers that are going in front of the floppy disk here. We've got the floppy disk here, and we can take the floppy disk and then subtract this mask. And so if we take a look here, basically this white part is going to be in front of all of our fingers and this part here is black so that will shine through and it'll look like that finger is in front of the floppy disk. Just kind of a lot of layers going on here. And then we can also add in the bag mask and say we want this to be in front as well. So these white parts will be the parts of our clean plate that we will definitely see at all times. Now I've put this through an invert and then that goes into an alpha over and if we just look at the end here, yeah, you can kind of see the correlation between the fingers and the mask. These fingers back here are going behind the bag and they're behind the disc and this thumb is in front. Now I'm just going to share real quick how I got the contact shadow with the thumb. Basically, I've got this mask and I want to say on this mask, I want a little area that's pretty blurry that is darker. And I want that to end up on the clean plate here like this. So we take the disc and I'm taking another crypto mat and this is just the thumb. I'm blurring this quite a bit. We're getting a nice kind of blurry shadow area here. And so then we've got black parts here and we've got black parts here and we want all the black parts to cancel out so that we just get a sliver of the shadow of the thumb. So if we multiply those together, that's what we get. We get this nice result here. And I'm actually sending this through a color ramp, so I had a little bit more control. This super white part here is actually going to end up being the darkest of the shadows. And then it just kind of fades out a little bit, so we get a nice shadow like that. And so this little sliver is going into a multiply node. And I'm multiplying the original clean plate using this factor with just black. So if we take a look at that, we've got this part where the thumb is going to be, and that just becomes a lot darker here, which is pretty cool. And then that's when we add over the CG thumb. And once again, we're just using our crazy mask to combine all of those together. And that's it. That's the shot. <laughs> Simple as that. So yeah, that's the process. If you're interested in a more step-by-step -step approach to something pretty similar, I've recently launched this course called Become the Robot. There's a link in the description where you can find that. But yeah, I'd say that's it for me. So I hope you have an excellent day. Cheers.